Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be doing a quick crash course of the Blender user interface, and this is entirely geared towards my upcoming Armory 3D game engine. Basically, if you have never used Blender before, or you're not that familiar with Blender, I'm going to get you up to speed with using the user interface and the basics of Blender operations so that you should be able to use the Armory game engine. This is by no means an in-depth uh, tutorial series on Blender, this is literally a crash course. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Obviously, I want you to have downloaded Blender. Uh, right now, Blender is 2.79 and 2.8 are the versions that are compatible with the Armory game engine. And I'm going to be using 2.79 for my series, so that is what we are covering today. Now, when you first load up Blender, it should look exactly like this. This is the default screen. You've got a cube in the middle of the world. Um, you're in the 3D view right here, and I'm going to show you a couple things right up front, just so when you, no doubt, screw up your environment, you can undo the damages. And that's something we're going to do quite a bit. So what you're going to want to do is, if you screw things up, just come in here and go to Load Factory Settings. That will ultimately get you back to default. So all of the things that you messed up, you can easily undo them with one click in the menu. So don't worry if things get a little screwed up. This is your primary interface right here. And the windowing interface in Blender is a little bit confusing. So we're going to talk about that first off. Now, every single window is toggleable. So see down here in the corner and right here in the corner, and then even right here, the main menu, they all have this pull down or drop down or drop up right there. You can switch the editor type of that window. And this is something you're going to be doing a lot working with Armory. So for example, in Armory, it's quite common to be using... Um, the nodes menu, basically node editor right here. So you see here, we just switched out to the node editor and we are now in it. Before we were in the 3D view, so we go like that, we can bring that back up. So that is how you switch between the various different windows. And you can switch any window at any time between different versions. So for example, I could turn this one down here into a node editor and keep this one as it is. So you see here when I do a resize, which for some reason isn't working, there we go. Uh, you'll see down here we have our node editor available here and we've got our 3D view available up here. Now, The next important thing to understand about changing and resizing windows in the Blender interface is that you can create and destroy windows on the fly as long as they are the same size. And this can be a little bit confusing, but you'll notice how we have this topmost window right here and this bottom window right here. They're actually, this is one solid window and this is one solid window. Well, if you look really closely in the corners right there, and right there, there's a little pull down you can see. And you can see it on the bottom ones too, right there and right there. Well, as long as those line up, you can now split up and split down new windows using them. So for example, if I want to get rid of this bottom window, I can take this bottom corner tab right here and drag it down. See how that arrow showed up? So when I let go, boom, that bottom window will be um, eliminated. So a very useful way of getting rid of windows. And at the same time, it's also a useful way of creating them. So here I can drag this guy to the left instead of down. And you see, we just created a new window. Now, since these are now the same size, I can drag this guy back at any time and get rid of it. However, if I drag this over like I just did, like so, and then I create a new window vertically like this, we can no longer get rid of them because they're not actually the same size along the one border. So to be able to get rid of this window again, I need to close this one first and then this one like so. Very powerful functionality. You can customize Blender incredibly detailed, but getting used to this breaking and creating new windows can take a bit of work. But it's something, again, when you're working with Armory, you're going to be creating new windows all the time. You're going to want to have the node editor up. You're going to want to have 3D view. If you're getting into texture mapping or animation, you're going to want timeline, etc. So this is something that's the reason why I'm covering it first. Now, another thing you probably noticed is this sidebar window right here. And there's actually another one on this side. So you can see they're built into, these are part of the 3D view window. So, so they go from here all the way to here. These are little sub menus that you can pop up and get rid of whenever you wish. Now, let me just do one thing really quickly. There we go. So now you should be able to see what I'm actually typing as I type it. Let me actually make it so you can read what I'm seeing. There we go. So if you look down here, you'll notice the keys as I press them or the mouse buttons as I hit them. Now, these two windows on the side, as I said, are part of the overall interface. And you can actually bring them back two ways. So you'll notice when they're gone, there's a little plus right here. You can click that plus icon and it will pop them back out. This is the tools menu. This is what this will contain a bunch of tools for whatever you're currently working on. On this side, you have your properties menu. And if I open that guy up, 
like that. Now you can also get rid of both of them. The one on the left, the tools menu can be gotten rid of using the T key. So if I press T, it goes away. If I press T again, it comes back. Now properties, you can do the same thing using the N key. Why N? No idea. Uh, but as you can see, it's easy to get rid of that window like so. So those are going to be available. Every single different editor could potentially have their own implementation of that. So for example, if I was in the node editor, you'll see if I hit T key, we got a different set of tools available there. And if I hit the N key, we got a different set of properties available there. So it is important to understand that, that those two exist. But again, remember that there are these plus keys here that you can visually get them back and forward. So that is probably the fastest thing, the, the most important thing you're going to need to understand right away. Next up, you're going to want to know about this guy over here. Now, this is one of the windows type and it's called the properties window. And I know that's confusing because this is also called the properties window, but the properties window you're going to use all the time. Essentially, this is where all of Armory is implemented. So it's going to be in the various different tabs here. These control the various different things you're working on. So for example, this is the rendering window, and this is where you would do all the settings for rendering your scene. But also, this is where the main bulk of Armory exists. We'll cover that when I get into Armory specifically. Uh, but that one for sure is going to be commonly used Scene is going to be used a little bit. This is controls the various different properties of your scene, the overall scene. Um, here is properties for your selected object. Now, we haven't actually got into that yet. So let me go back to the 3D view, and we're going to move into that now. But just to be aware that this property windows is very important. There's a, a lot of the um, properties and details of your scene are hidden down there. And that is where the entirety of the Armory game engine is implemented. So uh, do be aware of this guy here, and we'll get into the specifics as we cover them. Um, now, the next thing you've got right up here, this is the outliner. And basically, this shows you all of the things that exist in your world. So right now you can see the cube is highlighted, so the cube is currently selected. Uh, we can select the lamp, the single light in the scene, the camera, and anything that we add or create in the scene will be added here. And you can do neat things here like hide the visibility of stuff, so I can make it not visible, or I can make it so that it isn't rendered, or so that you can't select it. Uh, so the outliner is handy for basically navigating through your scene or your scene's data. You can actually switch between uh, different chunks of data, but for the most part, you'll keep it on all scenes up here. So that's the navigator. You're going to use that to basically, well, navigate through your scene. You can also right-click objects in your scene and delete them, uh, toggle their visibility, rename them, etc. So it's a very powerful interface. Now, another thing to keep in mind now is when we're dealing back in the 3D view, I'm going to throw a couple of hotkeys at you um, that you're really going to want to know. Uh, the, the big three are R, G, and S, all right? So S is for scaling, R is for rotating, and G, this one's a little confusing, G is for moving. So uh, rotate, scale, and G is actually for grab, but grab and move. And that works by, so here I just right-clicked, and I'll get back to that in a second. I right-clicked on this guy, and you'll see we've got manipulators we can use to move it along particular axes. And you can see the color coding of the axis in action. So you see here red is X, it's labeled down here, Y is green, and Z is up and down, the blue arrow right there. So it's very handy, especially once you start moving your camera around and the axis is get out of whack. But if you want to just grab and move something, you hit the G key and then you can freely move in a given direction. Um, same with scaling. So scale makes it bigger and smaller. You notice I've got S held. Okay, why is... So S, so there you see, you can scale it up and down as a result. Or I can do something like S and then X and then what we're doing is scaling just along the x-axis. And that works for every single key, for scale, for grab, and for rotate. You can rotate along a given axis by typing it after. So if I do G, X, then I'll move only along the X. G, Y, I'll move only along the Y. R and Z, I rotate around the Z axis. Very handy to use. But at the same time, you can also use these manipulators down here. So this is rotate, this is scale, and this is move. So if you want to just type, you can do it that way using these guys down here. And that is how you kind of move things around in the scene here. Now, what I did say earlier on was right-click selects. And that goes against every program ever created in the history of the world. It's a very contentious point in the world of Blender. Blender purists think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. People from other 3D packages think it's the dumbest thing they've ever seen. Fortunately, and this is a trip up for a lot of people, this, this right-click select is just off-putting for them. What you can do is go to user preferences and you go to input and what you can do is basically change it to 
Okay, did I mine on the wrong screen? Ah, right there, select. Select with, and if you want to have left click select, you can switch that. Uh, so if you prefer it that way, just go into the user preferences, go to select with and turn on left. Now while you're in here, another thing you probably want to be aware of is um, are you using a laptop? If you're using a laptop, well one of the big things about the way the Blender user interface works is it's optimized around having a number pad. And the number keys are used for quickly jumping between views. So another thing you're going to probably want to do, if you don't have a number key, number pad, turn on emulate numpad. I guarantee you, you're going to want that setting. I'll show you why in a second. And then when you're happy with your settings, go ahead and click save user settings, and then they will be preserved. And only thing to be aware of, if you do a factory reset, that setting will be gone. So you'll have to change it again. Uh, but right click select is um, confusing to a lot of people so I can understand why you may want to make that change. Uh, okay, so otherwise, what we've got going on here, what was I just gonna talk about? Oh yeah, the camera keys. So now that I moved those camera keys, we can actually go through your number keys. And they make a lot more sense when you think of them looking at a number pad, but you can use this to swap between your different camera aspect ratio. Um, so right now, we're looking at uh, a perspective shot. So if I press one, we'll actually look at it via the uh, front perspective, three, is right, uh, five changes between ortho and perspective, seven is top, and then if you use control with any combination, so control one will be the opposite, so that'll be back instead of front, control three will be left instead of right, uh, five, actually control five does nothing, seven is bottom instead of seven, so seven is top, control seven is bottom, and then finally zero is your camera's current view. So that is how you basically toggle between the different views that are available. Um, now in terms of navigating in the 3D world, your middle mouse button, hold it down and you can orbit the camera like so. Middle mouse button zooms in and out. Uh, sorry, like your wheel will zoom in and out like so. Shift middle mouse button will pan around like so. So using those guys, so your, your middle mouse wheel here, middle mouse button down here, and then shift and your middle mouse button there, control your camera control. So you can very easily move around between the different views. Now, let's look at uh, modes. Now this is probably another area that's a little bit confusing. In um, Blender, you are dealing, I gotta get out of ortho, drives me nuts. Uh, you are dealing mostly with um, either objects. So I'm right now dealing with objects as a whole, like you can see right here. Uh, if I wanna go into edit mode, I can do that right here. So you see right down here, we can switch between all of our various different modes. Now chances are right away, you're not gonna need to worry about any of those other modes initially, but edit mode is definitely one you're gonna get into. What edit mode allows you to do is deal with um, objects uh, by their components. So basically now I'm actually editing the object instead of the object as a whole. So I can switch between um, the different modes. So right now you can see right here, I'm in vertex mode. So I can select a vertex, and I can move it accordingly. And again, G, S, and um, R are the, the same keys there. So if I do a G, you see I can move it around like so. If I do a scale, it's gonna do nothing because it's only a single vertex, but we can switch into the other modes here. So if I go here to edge mode and I select an edge, we can now move the edges around. So it's moving it that way. So if I do a scale, you'll see I am scaling a particular edge. So that is edit mode. Now another handy keyboard shortcut to be aware of is control tab. Now control tab is like alt tab. It allows you to alternate between these different modes. So we've got why are you doing so? So if I'm in object mode and I do control tab, it will switch me in and out of the various different modes. Generally it's edit mode and object mode I want to go between. Another thing you do is control tab and then that'll bring up this little selection menu and it allows you to choose between uh, the vertex, edge, and face. So if I want to do edges, I can do um, that one right there, or you can also use the number key equivalent. So uh, control tab, and then I've got a menu option of three options here. If I press one now, it'll pick the first option, which is vertex. If I press two, it'll pick edge, or if I press three, it will pick face. And now we are in face editing mode, like so. And that is object versus edit mode. Now, while you're in here, there's also a bunch of stuff hidden away behind quick key menus. And they're control E, control F, and control V. And control E, I'll bring up the quick edges mode. 
Control F will bring up the quick faces mode, and Control V will bring up the quick vertex mode. So all of the different operations you do in those modes specific to them can be brought quickly up with this menu. But you'll also notice that over here they're available as well. So when I'm in um, edit uh, face mode, we have a certain set of options there. But if I switch here, control tab one into vertices mode, the options will switch out for me. And again, we can come here. So now I'm in vertex mode. I can select a vertex like so, hit control V, and then I have my vertex options. Now, another option or menu shortcut that you should be aware of is W. Now W gives you a quick kind of context sensitive menu of the options available to you. Um, some of the most commonly used specials are available here and you'll find a lot of times the thing that you are looking for is just hidden behind that W key. Now speaking of looking for something, you may also find that sometimes you're looking for a command and have no idea uh, if it exists or where it is. So for example, say I select, so I'm going to switch here to edge mode and I'm going to select this edge. Now if I want to go ahead and bevel that edge and I don't know how to do it, well first off, it's there under the edge menu if I do control E. But what I could also do is hit space bar and just start typing. And there you go, and you'll see the different options that are available. And then now I can do that operation. Now I'm not gonna get into any of the modeling details. You don't really need to know them uh, to get started with um, the Armory engine in any case. So I think actually that might be about where I am going to end things off. I don't wanna overload you with details. It's mostly about being able to navigate around the interface and get access to those most important couple hotkeys you're gonna to need to know. Now I will give you a quick recap of the keys I ran through because again, they are very important. So back to, um, um, I tabbed out, so I'm now in, so tab switches between object mode an edit mode, control tab, switches between modes within edit mode. It's the same as using these guys right down here. Go back to object mode with the tab. Um, I can do G to grab or move things around, S to scale, in or out, and R to rotate. And once again, you can follow up a key with a value. So there is my Y axis, you can see right there. I'm gonna do R and then Y, and now we're just gonna rotate around that axis alone. Uh, at the same time, remember this transform menu over here is T, like so, and over here is N, like so. And you can switch menus using this guy down here, and remember, you can create new menus, collapse them out by dragging out those corners, but they have to be the same size if you want to go ahead and get rid of them again. Oops, went the wrong way, like so, and like so. All right, so that is my uh, Blender 2.7 crash course. If there's something specific I haven't covered here, uh, do let me know in the comments down below and I will try to go over it. Again, I don't want to overwhelm you with things. I just want to be able to show you how you can navigate around Blender and, um, you know, get to what you need to work with Armory. If you want to get into more detail, I have two full uh, Blender tutorial series I will toss down below. So if you want to learn more about modeling or texturing or animating or rendering or any of those things, uh, do be sure to check those down below. Also, I will have um, Armory tutorials up very, very soon. So literally, this was just meant to show you your way around Blender. And hopefully it was effective. Don't, don't get scared. Blender is not as bad as it looks initially. It will become muscle memory very quickly and you will be up and operating and racing around in no time at all. All right, that's it for now. I hope you found that useful and uh, stay tuned for that Armory series coming very soon. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.